Good afternoon. I'm Adam Walker, Parliamentary Secretary for the New Economy. I'd like to begin by acknowledging we are on the traditional lands of the Lekwungen speaking peoples, known today as the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations. As a new Parliamentary Secretary, I have to say it's a great honour to be chosen to serve the Premier and the people of British Columbia and to be connected with the Ministry of Labour and Minister Harry Baines. I'm joined today by my colleague Mike Farnworth, Minister of Public Safety and the Solicitor General. It's a privilege to co-host my first announcement alongside such a distinguished and long-serving minister. Here to tell us more about today's announcement is Minister Farnworth. Thank you, uh, Parliamentary Secretary Walker, uh, for the introduction and for your great work on this file. And good afternoon, and thank you all for joining us today. I'm Mike Farnworth, BC's Minister of Public Safety and Solicitor General. First, I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we're on the traditional land of the Lekwungen speaking people and the Songhees and Esquimalt nations, and we're grateful to be here today on their territory. When we formed government, the Premier tasked me with helping BC restaurants and hospitality businesses through COVID by delivering a temporary cap on food delivery fees. Our government has worked quickly to get this done. And today I'm pleased to announce that through a ministerial order under the Emergency Program Act, we are enacting a temporary cap on fees charged to restaurants by food delivery companies. Effective December 27, the delivery fees will be capped to 15%, providing immediate relief for struggling restaurants and cafes. The order includes an additional cap of 5% for other related fees such as payment processing and online ordering fees. To ensure that delivery costs will not be shifted to other fees for restaurants using these services. We have also added provisions to protect the drivers to make sure that they are retaining their regular wages and gratuities. This order will allow businesses to stay focused on remaining open and to focus on keeping the over 190,000 staff within the sector on payrolls. Due to the pandemic, restaurants and the hospitality industry have suffered significant losses and faced challenges. They need our support right now. And we're committed to helping them weather the storm of the COVID-19 pandemic, however possible. Earlier this year, our government took immediate action to support the industry during the pandemic through a variety of temporary measures such as allowing establishments to sell and deliver sealed packaged liquor products for off-site consumption alongside the purchase of a meal and permitting the expansion of patios so businesses can continue to operate safely while observing the provincial health officers mandates. And today's order is another way we can provide supports to our local restaurants and hospitality businesses. The COVID-19 pandemic has created unprecedented challenges for all British Columbians and we're all finding ways to work together and get through this. I want to thank my colleague Adam Walker for his commitment to ensure that we are listening to stakeholders and providing businesses with the supports they need and for ensuring that we are working towards a stronger, more prosperous future. Thank you. To everybody on the phone, please press star 1 to enter the queue. You are limited to one question and one follow-up only. Please also take your phones off mute. You will not be audible until your name is called. First question today is from Georgie Smith, CBC. Hi there. Um, just wondering if um, you expect uh, more enforcement and fines over the holidays for restaurants and bars, and what's the plan for churches that are still operating in contravention of the orders? Well, first off, uh, the, uh, the orders uh, and, uh, and mandates um, that uh, Provincial Health uh, Officer Bonnie Henry are, 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 have put in place uh, are enforced uh, regardless of whether it's Christmas or not Christmas. Uh, in the same way that uh, just because it's Christmas you don't get to drink and drive, um, you have to obey the, uh, the orders, uh, the Provincial Health orders that Bonnie Henry has uh, put in place. Uh, and so police will do enforcement uh, just as they have been doing. Uh, with regards to the churches, uh, and I would uh, just want to make it clear, it is a very uh, small minority. I think there are three or four. Um, as you know, uh, police have levied fines. Uh, they have also recommended uh, charges uh, 
to the prosecutorial service, which is where it's at, and they're doing the job that they're supposed to be doing. Georgie, do you have a follow-up? I do. Just to clarify, um, it sort of sounds like many restaurants and bars are getting the message, but um, fines are still being handed out. So are you confident that um, going into this busy period, they are understanding what they can and can't do? And just as my second question, what would you tell British Columbians who are doing the right thing, that they're seeing friends and, and maybe family break the rules with no consequences? Um, bars and restaurants uh, are doing the right thing. Uh, there is always, you know, a few that uh, try and skirt the rules. And as we've seen, uh, there are fines that will be levied. And uh, liquor inspectors, for example, uh, have been out uh, doing just that. Um, and again, when it comes to, uh, to family and friends and, and the majority of British Columbians are obeying the rules. Uh, but, you know, you can always take the opportunity to remind friends and family uh, that you can be fined for not following the provincial health uh, officer's orders uh, and that uh, police uh, have, been issuing, uh, have been issuing those fines. Um, right now, I think there's uh, almost 400, uh, 400 tickets uh, have been issued. Uh, and as I said, just because it's Christmas uh, does not mean that uh, you won't be fined if you're not uh, following the rules. Next question is from Ian Bailey, Globe and Mail. Ian, are you there? Yes, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, Minister, how long might this, uh, you described this as a temporary cap. What's your thinking about how long this uh, cap will be in place? This will be in place for as long as the, uh, the state of emergency uh, is in place, plus an additional three months. Uh, the state of emergency uh, is being renewed, uh, and I fully expect the, uh, the state of emergency is going to be in place for quite some time to come yet. Ian, do you have a follow-up? Yeah, Minister, I wonder if you could say, what, what's your sense of how this is going to help the industry, the, the restaurant industry, that is? Uh, this is one of the areas that the, uh, the restaurant industry has said that uh, they need uh, significant help. Uh, this, this is a, a direct request from them uh, to put this cap in place. Uh, that's why they're doing it. They see this as being uh, uh, an important uh, step uh, in helping the, uh, the industry uh, not only stabilize, but in terms of them being able to survive and get through this pandemic. Next question is from Gordon Hoekstra, Vancouver Sun. Thank you for taking my question. Minister, what's, what's the general sense, how high have these fees been from these delivery uh, companies? Well, we've heard uh, 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 all kinds of uh, uh, complaints in terms of the, the kinds of fees that are being charged, uh, in some cases upwards of 30% uh, or more. Um, and uh, what we've seen is that uh, the same thing has happened in other jurisdictions, and uh, other jurisdictions have put in place similar measures as to what we've got here. Uh, we have done a consultation with the, uh, the industry, uh, the Restaurant Association, uh, the BC Federation of Labor, uh, and uh, have, have arrived at, uh, at uh, these, uh, these caps, uh, which uh, I think meet the needs of the, uh, the restaurant industry and will help them through the, uh, the pandemic. Follow up, Gordon? Yes, when you, when you say you've had discussions with the industry, has there been a discussion with the actual delivery uh, you know, companies themselves, and what's their take on this? Yes, there have, uh, and I, if you want further uh, detail on that, I will uh, ask uh, Parliamentary Se uh, um, Secretary Walker, who can, who can uh, go into that a little bit further, but there most certainly have been discussions uh, with the, uh, with the uh, industry. Baptism by fire. Thank you for the question. We've had extensive discussions with, uh, with uh, three major food delivery service companies in, in Canada and, uh, and through those discussions we've determined that uh, the approach that we're taking is a balanced approach uh, that will allow them to uh, sustain their business uh, throughout the pandemic while also supporting restaurant workers and the delivery drivers themselves who uh, will rely on this, uh, this uh, non-standard work. Tim Ford, Victoria Buzz. Yeah, for you, Minister. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, just in looking at the order itself, um, I'm trying to discern if there is a potential loophole where a delivery company could be passing on uh, the difference in charges to the customer. Uh, if that loophole does exist, are you concerned at all that the increase in cost to the consumer could potentially drive down business? 
One of the things that uh, we have noticed or that we know about this sector is that while there are major companies uh, uh, who, are, who are involved in it, there are also now uh, an increasing number of smaller companies. And so we expect uh, the companies will be very mindful of the competition that they will be facing from each other, but also new entrants into the, uh, into the marketplace, and that also consumers are not going to stand by uh, and, uh, and, and, and you know, uh, uh, pay more than they feel that, that, uh, that is fair. Tim, do you have a follow-up? Uh, no, thank you. Next question is from Martin McMahon, News 1130. Minister Farnworth, just uh, curious as to how you've arrived at this 15% this figure. What was the, the formula there? We've looked at uh, other jurisdictions, uh, how they have dealt with the issue. As, uh, as Parliamentary Secretary Walker has stated, uh, there were discussions uh, with the industry, with the restaurant association itself. Uh, and so between all of those things, we arrived at what we feel is a, a fair balance. Follow up, Martin? A que yeah, it's just a question on, on something related. There's been a lot of discussion about the, uh, the mask mandate in apartment buildings, and I know Emergency Management BC has been looking at potentially making it a, a true mandate and making it necessary. Is, is that, are you any closer to make it, making a decision on that, or is it, is it status quo right now? Uh, right now, we, are, uh, we have worked with the, uh, the provincial uh, health officer, uh, and it is being treated as, uh, as a, uh, a health matter uh, at this point. Uh, and so we are, you know, while we're still looking at it, uh, we've got the, the current uh, provincial health uh, orders in place. And the reality is, is uh, many, many facilities are already have mask policies in place. Those are all the questions we have for today. Thank you for joining us. Thanks.